everyone. Today's topic, decorating on a dime, or how to turn other people's garbage into your own cherished possessions. All right, today's project has never before been attempted by me, and there's no reason to think I actually know what I'm doing, but you're just coming along for the ride on this one. So what do I have from the trash, you're wondering? I have, ow, I have three oars, you know, for when you go rowing. We live right by a river, and we found these oars in people's trash, different people, different trash days, unrelated oars, but we have three oars. We're going to paint the blade of each of the three oars with a different design, and then we're going to mount the oars up on the wall above those mirrors. We have very, very high ceilings, so I'm thinking the three of them across there will hopefully look kind of cool. For the designs on the blades, we're looking at this, my very favorite t-shirt ever. Oxford University in England, rowing with the blades, showing, I guess, the emblems from the various colleges of the university. I'm trying to work just with stuff I already have because I can't go out and buy any craft paint or anything right now because I, you know, quit my job and don't have any money. What I'm thinking of doing first is painting the blade with white so hopefully whatever design goes on will adhere better to the clean new surface of white paint than it necessarily would to the surface of the oar blade. I like that each of the oars is a different color. This one has your wood tone and we have one that looks much older and kind of beat up and doesn't seem to have any shellac on it anymore and that's a very, that's a very dark brown blackish one. And then there's kind of the off white one. And I have washed them, I washed them. And remember, if I screw these up, they were just trash to begin with. So let's not get too emotionally caught up in success. I've been thinking some lately about how to decorate or redecorate on a dime because sometimes I really do feel that my life would be all fixed and perfect if I could just get new furniture. I do realize that's not true, but I still sort of feel that way sometimes. So I've been thinking about the steps you can take to redecorate without actually having to go spend a lot of money. The first step, I think, is cleaning. I think you'll hate your decor a lot less if everything's really, really cleaned up, really thoroughly cleaned you know, dusting the woodwork and the baseboards and scrubbing high and low and, and tidying, putting everything away and whatever you don't want, you put aside to donate or sell or whatever, but you have it set aside somewhere and you've cleared and cleaned and, and minimized the space, organized. So what you have looks the best it can. The next step to redecorating is move your furniture around or move the pictures around on the walls. That can really help you feel that novelty of new furniture because you get a new look with what you have. Maybe, maybe change out the throw cushions on your sofa or, or you can take away that blanket that you have folded and draped over the chair or for the chair that doesn't have a blanket draped over it, go find a blanket and drape it. So then after you've cleaned, organized, minimized, and rearranged what you've already got, you can assess the space and say, okay, what about this still isn't working for me? Do I need some piece of new furniture to make it all come together and make my home decorating dreams come true? Well, that's when you wanna to look to free sources rather than, oh, I need to go buy a new settee. So one resource you can make use of is freecycle.org. For those of you who've never heard of it, F-R-E-E-C-Y-C-L-E, freecycle.org. You go on that site and you look up your country and then within your country, your state 
and your town to get to your local free cycle group. And then you can see what people have posted that they want to give away to a new good home. Somebody might be getting rid of a sofa or a desk or a bed or some pots and pans or whatever it is they don't need. They don't want to just throw in the trash. They're not planning on having a yard sale. They just want to give it to a new home. They will list this item on FreeCycle. We've actually gotten two really nice sofas from FreeCycle. So people list what they no longer need, but they don't want it to just go to waste and be thrown away. What else have we gotten from Free Cycle? I think we got twin beds, mahogany twin beds, really nice beds actually. And um, I think some stuff for the kitchen we've gotten from Free Cycle. You can also go on and put out there what it is you're looking for. You can list something you want to get rid of, but you can also write out what you're looking for. So Free Cycle is an excellent resource. And then of course you're going to have whatever websites that list used things at a good price like Craigslist maybe. Then of course you have your curbside shopping as a source of new home decor items. I'm sure we've all seen it out there for the trash. Sofas, chairs, lamps, vacuums, tables, beds, dressers, desks, Everything. I've seen everything. Appliances, TVs, patio furniture, everything you can imagine in the house people are willing to throw away. You can always invest in a gallon or two of paint and spruce up the place. Everything looks better with a fresh clean coat of paint. All right, so there you are. You've cleaned, organized, minimized, rearranged, you have touched up the paint, you've repainted and you've fluffed up your throw pillows, you've been looking for free stuff. Your next step is yard sales. People sell a lot of great stuff at yard sales and some people overvalue their merchandise but some people will sell it super, super cheap. I got these three really nice armchairs years ago, years ago. Year, years ago when I was getting married the first time, I think I got three or four armchairs for five dollars each. You want to be careful about the expense of reupholstering or making a slip cover if the covering isn't so much to your liking, but you, you can get good cheap furniture at yard sales. Also in terms of looking in people's trash, you want to remember that in university towns, students leave at the end of the school year, so they might be leaving things behind. And you want to remember that at apartment complexes, people might be moving out at the end of a month. So towards the end of the month, you might find interesting furniture pieces down at the apartment dumpster. Hey, if you sew, you can make the new slip covers. A lot of wood furniture just needs a coat of paint or you know, you can strip it and refinish it. I've always wanted to do that and I never really have known how to refinish wood. But the other day I spilled nail polish in the bathroom and it dripped down on the vanity. I didn't know I had done that and I came back later and all the finish was removed from where the nail polish remover had dripped down. And I thought, oh, if it's as easy as a nail polish remover to strip the finish off furniture, I'm ready to go. I have a lot of stuff here that I could start to strip and refinish. All right, everybody has their first coat of white paint, so I'll let that dry. Then I'll give it another coat so it has a nice smooth finish. And then we'll figure out what designs to use for the blades. And hopefully Frugal Daddy's figured out how we're gonna mount them on the wall, because if it was just me, I'd be just jamming big nails in the wall and propping them up and... All right, so here we are the next day. And I've done two of the paddles. I'm pretty constrained by the paint colors I have to work with. I'm just not going to go out and buy new paints to do this project. So here's the first paddle I did. We have the purple with the yellow stripes. And according to my shirt, that is New College of Oxford University. Okay, then for the second paddle, Frugal Daddy said I should do the colors for Dartmouth, my alma mater, 
which has nothing to do with Oxford University. So anyway, Dartmouth's paddle design looks something like this. Then he wanted me to do Drexel, his alma mater, but they have a dragon or something as their emblem. And I was all like, I can't paint your dragon. I don't have time for this. So what I plan to do for the third one is this paddle with the red and the white cross. That looks very crusader-ish, doesn't it? And that is from Regent's Park College. All right, so I'm gonna use painter's tape to make straight lines. I'm not wild about it because whenever I use it, paint still always seems to seep under the edge and I don't know, I don't know what I'm doing wrong with it, but so here we go with the tape and the painting. My basic technique here is I am using this oil paint marker and I'm dabbing the paint on, but I'm not getting great coverage when I try to scribble with it. So I'm trying to get paint on and then I'm just spreading it around with my finger. Yes, this would be a whole lot easier if I just had a jar of red paint and a paintbrush, but I have what I have. And this is the only red paint I have to work with. And so this is what I'm using. I'm not saying this is the recommended or most efficient technique, but this is what I have to work with given what I have to work with. And we're going to peel the painter's tape off and see what we have going on here. Eh. See, it always, it bleeds under. I don't know if you can see that close kind of bugs me. Hey! So there we go with this one. And now I just need to wait for Frugal Daddy to get the mounting on the wall situation straightened out. So here we are weeks and weeks later. What's that man doing? Is he stealing from our car? Is that the guy with no teeth? I don't know. Anyway, Finally, Frugal Daddy has said, yes, I will help put the oars up on the wall. I could get up there and put them up, but then he would tell me, oh, you're doing it wrong. Oh, you knocked a big hole in the plaster. <laughs> there is this the is wall. The middle one? This is the middle one? Yeah. We're going to have two going one way and one going the other way. And the red one is the one that's going to go the other way because it won't look as pretty with those colors. So the green and purple will go in one direction and then the red in between going in the other direction. Up, parallel to the wall and floor. And go! My neighbor wouldn't ask for help because she knew that I would be obsessive with hanging her pictures. She just walks up with the heel of her high heel shoe and bangs in a nail. The nail. That's I what said, I do. Yeah, I can't do that. I, I do. measure, I balance, I mm -hmm. level. Nail. So, Shoe, bam, hang the picture, walk away. So this this may take all day. It's going to be perfect. Everybody's going to be perfect. Great. Way too low. How tall do you think I am? I don't know. Okay, good. None of them are the same size. Like that. Yeah, well, they're not supposed to all be the same because we don't like to be all matchy-matchy. This and they looks were like it's from a Viking ship. They were found at three different times in three different places. In three different tra trash heaps. Uh -huh. Just eyeball it. You don't have to measure it. Just, just eyeball it. You'll be fine. Now he's using the back of a really rusty old hatchet to hammer picture. What are we hammering? Oh, oh my god! Did you just hit yourself oh in the forehead? God. I was sh like jokingly showing you what I could do. God. God. It's so dull, you could use it as a hammer with really small nails. Yeah, it's so dull you can hit yourself in the forehead with it. And not and, even and not, bleed. Not even, God. <sighs> we have 15 hammers, and I'm using this. <laughs> Alright, what are you hammering into the oars? 
I've decided because hooks. Oh, because well, we're going with cheap, and this is what I found out in the carriage house. Oh, okay, he's going to nail these type of picture hangers onto the oar, and then thusly, and then that, that will that will just hang on a nail onto a uh, on the flat wall screw head onto a flat screw head apparently. And they're all spaced evenly, so the screws can go up, and all you have to do is just walk up and do this. And here's a good frugal daddy tip on hammering. Use the needle nose pliers to hold the nail while you're hammering so you don't smash the hammer onto your fingers. Or if you're hatcheting. Or the hatchet. on the topic of frugal home decor you might remember from my home tour that I really like um, stained glass you might not remember because I probably didn't say it in the home tour but check that out really good footage of our super creepy basement in that video anywho yes I like stained glass that's a modern piece of stained glass that I got about 10 15 years ago and that is an old piece of stained glass that frugal daddy claims is original to the house it's a really gray, cloudy morning out, so the light is not shining through that and looking as pretty as it usually does, but it's a nice piece of stained glass. And back to the bottles. Okay, so stained glass is really expensive, sadly so. Even really old pieces, or maybe especially old pieces, I don't know. So, what I have liked to do in some of my windows is put up these blue glass bottles in lieu of stained glass. It's just something blue and pretty and shiny to go in a window. More to dust, of course. More clutter. And back to these bottles again. So, Frugal Daddy got these in the trash recently and they're super dirty and dusty and yucky. And when he told me he got these old jars, I said, I don't want more crap in the house. But then when I saw they were blue glass, I said, oh yes, lay me on some more of that crap because I can wash these up and put them in a window. All right, this maybe isn't the best window for these to be in, but just for the sake of the video, I shoved them in this window. Ideally, they would be up a little higher, and it'd be a nice sunny day, and the light would be coming through. May I tell you a little commentary on this window? Yeah, go ahead, commentate. With my brand new garbage mug. I know, it's very retro, retro. very, very nice, yeah. This I was going to fix over the summer. They, I took the um, window sill off. This is what was under it. Oh, I wondered about what right. that piece of yeah, wood was. Yeah, the window was. sill. Remember, there were drawers here, too. There yeah. were little drawers under the window. Oh, yeah, that's right. So it was higher. Yeah, yeah. But, well, um, we need to do something with this window because it looks yes, terrible. Right. But things? for the moment, it's just going to have lovely blue glass in it. Yeah, we're going to have a new window. I'm going to put a new window in the summer. That would I be nice. Promise. A big bay window? One yeah, big you know bay window? Yeah, we're going to get it? Where are we going to get it? In the trash. All right, the picture hangers have been attached to the back, and he has laid them out here on the floor to get an idea of what the spacing will be. Is that good? I think that's good. And now he's going up on the ladder to measure where to put the nails that the picture hangers will hang on to mount the oars on the wall. Easy peasy. And you know how far apart on the oar you put the picture inches. hangers? Okay. Yes. On all three. Wow. Do you want to paint the molding while you're up there? Um, well, of course I'd like to, but... But you don't want to take the fun away from I'm me? I'm kind of busy. For the first time ever, I'm going to try my Dremel with a drill bit instead of a cordless drill or an electric drill. I'm also going to use a card to catch the plaster as it falls. Don't leave this up there because when you pull it down, it bumps you in the head. And I've learned that a couple of times. What bumps you in the head? The Screwdriver as it falls off the top of the ladder. Uh -huh. Ta da! Looks great, honey! You did a good job! Oh. Dad, 
decorating on a dime. As always, thanks for watching. See you next time.